astrology of April 2024. It's going to be a crazy month. A true roller coaster awaits us of emotions, of geopolitical tensions, of breakthroughs, of great healing, of transformation. You name it. We got it all in April. Watch this video to be ready. All right, so let's get into it. April 2024, this month that's ahead of us, it looks really packed and crazy. We've got all of the different shades of human emotions in the collective consciousness in this month, obviously correlating and corresponding with geopolitical events, with world events. And here on this channel, from Dr. V, from yours truly, you get all of that unpacked and decoded, the only place where you get the real unadulterated and unvarnished astrology straight up. So let's look at April and let's see how we can best prepare for this month, what we can do in our personal lives and what we have to await and expect and look out for on the world level. All right, so let's actually look at the charts. That's the best way to get into it and to understand and to start reading what's happening. The charts, they are like a big clock, a cosmic clock that tells us what time it is, but it tells us what time it is on a symbolic and archetypal plane and level, right? And most people cannot read this. So if you are able to read this, or if you're able to get the updates and the downloads on what's happening on the archetypal level, you are several steps ahead of most other people. So let's start doing this. We start to look at the charts for April. I'm actually still in March here. Let's move to April. And going into April, we actually start with a really smooth and nice and suave uh, constellation, which is the Venus Neptune here in Pisces, as you can see. So this is, you know, this is both Venus and Neptune feel really good in Nep in. In, in Pisces, right, they're both, they got this dreamy quality here. When they're coming together, this is all about romantic experiences and higher idealized experiences of aesthetics and love. So this is a really nice time going into the month, in the first few days of the month. It's a great time for a romantic getaway, for arts experiences. You're probably going to hear in the news some artists uh, dropping or some arts-related uh, products and innovations coming out, for instance, with regards to AI image generation or AR and VR, something about aesthetics and senses. This is going to be the theme of, of the day of those few days, actually, right? So the beginning of, of the month is quite smooth. But then, you know, this doesn't last long, even though that conjunction is in place for the first week of, of April and gives it this kind of dreamy and melodic uh, backdrop. But at the same time, you can see already you've got here the Mars-Saturn conjunction brewing, right? And this is quite serious, right? So these are the smaller, the lesser malefic and the greater malefic, as the traditional astrologers called it, right? The two kind of evil doers, and when they get together in the skies, right, which happens uh, on in regular intervals, you know, every one to two years, when they get together in the skies, then, well, we have some, some issues, right? Things start to, you know, things tend to come into the collective consciousness, which are more about harshness and brutality and, and uh, destruction. However, this being in Pisces, right? This all has still a tone of kind of, you know, it has a certain subdued tone. So let me explain to you what this means. But first, you know, so you understand the picture. So you understand the energy that's governing this, this month for large parts of this month. What happened actually when Saturn, when Mars, excuse me, Mars, when Mars went into Pisces. So when we go back as Mars entered into Pisces, right? You see here on the 23rd, actually the first couple of days when Mars enters into a new sign, they're usually, you know, this is when some malefic things tend to happen 
and tend to be concentrated in that sign, right? And it's on that day, you know, the 23rd of March, that we had the terror attack in Russia, right? So that was at a, a concert hall, right? A concert hall is a place of amusement and art, which is Pisces. And Mars goes into there, the evildoer, right? The malefic goes into arts, right? And this is the first thing. And then what's next? After the next big thing, you know, the next thing that really fits the signature, a few days later, 26th of March, right? We had the, the, the bridge in Baltimore break down, right? So the Francis Scott Key Bridge, it broke down. And this is with Mars still in the first signs of Pisces. Pisces is also water, right? Water and, and waterways, right? And Mars being there, it means breakdowns and uh, bad things, generally speaking, with regards to, with regards to uh, you know, breaks, disruptions, violence, and so on and so forth in that space, in that field happening. And another thing I want to show you so you understand actually how deep the astrology is Right, so you're seeing this here. This is the chart of the Francis Scott Key Bridge when it was inaugurated, right? So it was on inaugurated when? 23rd of March, 1977, right? Just like a uh, company, a person, anything, any entity really, a bridge, an infrastructure also has a birth date, also has a natal chart that you can create for it, that you can cast for it. And it's so... It's so impressive. I mean, if you haven't actually looked into this stuff, which most astrologers don't and they miss this, but when you learn to work with asteroids, you can get so much more depth and so much more insights into the flow of reality. I'm going to show you here how. So you see, in this chart, you've got the Saturn Uranus square, right? What is this? This is, you know, structures being ruptured by sudden events. Right? So this was already built under a very bit bad start. So, you know, if you will, and with the moon in, in this T-square here, right? So with people being affected, the populace being affected by that rupture. And then you've got the, look at this, you've got the asteroid Dali here. It's part of this con con configuration here. It's actually, it makes a T-square. You see, I'm going to show you again. It makes an exact T-square with Saturn and with Uranus here. You see? And Dali was, lo and behold, it was the name of the ship from Singapore, which rammed into the bridge, right? And you see it here. It's written here. It's written in, this, in the chart, right? Years before this happened, the potential of it happening is already written in the chart. And here you've got the asteroid Washingtonia, and it's with Uranus. So you see here, the Dali, which opposes the structure, right? Dali opposite Saturn and leads to the rupture, square Uranus, and which leads to, again, a disruption in Washington, right? All of this is written in a chart. So this is really the level of insight that you can get from astrology when you are able to use the higher techniques and technologies and the higher methods such as asteroids. This is just an example. Okay, let's get back to our Mars, Saturn in Pisces. All right, so let's get back to the chart and let's see where this month goes. We've got the Mars-Saturn constellation, the conjunction brewing. And when does it get together? Let's see. We've got it exact here in April 10th, right? So in early April, it's still starting to constellate. And then it goes, you know, they go into aspect and they get together and they are exact on April 10th, right here. And then after that, they just still continue, right? And they still move and, and they start to slowly move out of aspect, but they're basically still in aspect for the rest of the month, right? And so what does it mean? We've got the greater malefic and the lesser malefic. Calamities, right? Misfortunes, uh, attacks as well. And all of these things are happening with that Piscean tone, Right, So it gives it a certain air of unreality, a certain air of confusion, of hiddenness, right? So it's like, this is about hidden attacks. This is about sneaky stuff going down, right? So get ready for sneaky shit go, to go down in April. Obviously, this depends on 
what your chart says, where your chart, how your chart is aspected, right? So where you're going to be the, 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 you know, the person who, who's on the receiving end, or maybe you're the perpetrator, you know, God forbid, hopefully not. But obviously, you know, how this plays out in your life, it depends on your chart. It depends on what constellations are activated in your chart. But generally speaking, the quality of the times is some really sneaky things happening, which can be very, very damaging in April, right? So take care of this. Look out for this. Look out for offers that are made that are too good to be true. Look out for sneaky attacks coming at you from, you know, without you even noticing because that has that Pisces energy, right? So you have Mars and Saturn in Pisces. It means it's, it's kind of, you know, nebulous. It's not clear where it's coming from. And on the world level, if we look at world events, there is a correlation there, obviously, as always. And this is what we really need to do to understand things. It's not just, you know, some astrologers only look at the personal level. Others only look at the, the geo level, the geopolitics level. You need to understand both levels, all the levels, and the metaphysical, the spiritual as well, right? So on the world level, this correlates with what? It correlates with espionage. Get ready for seeing some big events happening, transpiring around mid-April, right? Around international espionage. And which countries specifically, or, you know, are hidden attacks, hidden attacks, diplomatic rows, and, you know, hidden and backhanded type of aggressions taking center stage on the international floor, right? So which country specifically, I can tell you more, I can show you here. So you got China here, and China, I'm putting China, and I'm putting the, let me see, I'm putting the transits outside with China. So let's take China, and let's see here, you see this, China is inside and you got the transits outside and you see this opposition this this con conjunction with mars saturn it's exactly opposite the saturn in china's chart in the seventh house right so china's seventh house saturn is what is their very steady and constant way of doing foreign policy right having these kind of long-term relationships where they're kind of very strict you know, with their, with their partners, and they build these very lasting uh, partnerships, right? But also, they can get really, you know, they can get heavy, right? With the Mars and, and Pluto, they, can, they know how to fight, right? With, in, in foreign relations, and, and very smart and strategic about it. But they have this, this, this uh, eruption of sneaky energy that we're going to have in mid-April. It's going to be op opposite exactly the Chinese Saturn, so you can expect to see some, some international events going down mid-April around China and their foreign policy, and, you know, rows in, in, in uh, espionage, in, in military confrontation, some escalations around some of their disputes that they have currently around the, the, the sea, the south, you know, the, the sea, the disputed area. In, in the, the maritime regions that are disputed with lots of other countries there. That's a couple of potential things that, that can happen around this, this constellation, how this could show itself. Actually, Russia is as well, Russia is affected as well. So you got Russia here with, you see, Russian Jupiter. The Russian Jupiter is in the third house, right? The third house is the, for a country is your neighbors, your close neighbors, right? And Jupiter is expansionism. So... The Russians are very expansionistic when it comes to their close neighbors. Sure, that's known. And here, these type of, you know, these type of, you know, attacks, the sneaky attacks, the backhanded, the, the, the you know, the calamities uh, in the international sphere to do with espionage, right? They're going to also be affecting their campaign, right? Their expansionistic campaign that they're currently fighting that they're currently waging in, in Ukraine. So you can, you can basically think the Russians are going to make some big moves as well in April, in mid-April, around this time. All right, so what's next? Let's go back to our, to our transits and let's check what's going to be next, right? So we had the dreamy start with the Venus-Neptune, right? Then we had the, the 
you know, the increase in calamities of a sneaky nature. And then this, this month is really, really packed, as I was saying, right? Ar around this, this entire time, along this, this, as this is happening, you also, obviously, you've got the, the Mercury retrograde, which just started, or just about to start, right? It's, and it's in for most of April. And the Mercury retrograde is going to be about a, a uh, recasting and rethinking of our how we how we fight and how we argue right it's in it's in Aries so for you on a personal level if you have fights or arguments if you had fights and arguments this is going to be a time to be able to go in and and you know rethink them and even you know start going into them with a different strategy change your strategy there you know rethink your strategy in any of your disputes that you have and, or also for new projects that you're starting. Aries obviously is about pioneering and innovation and, and new, new events. And the eclipse on the 8th is when we have the conjunction with Sun and Chiron, right? There is a huge eclipse. The eclipse is going to be so important that I wouldn't do it justice right now in this video if I would talk about it. So I'm going to make another video specifically on the eclipse and what it's going to mean. So make sure not to miss that. Subscribe right now to the channel if you haven't, right? So you don't miss the game-changing, life-changing, potentially nation-changing, specifically for the U.S. because it, the eclipse is over the United States, right? There's going to be another video on that. Just go and subscribe right now so you don't miss that. But now let's get back to this. The sun with Chiron conjunction, right? Sun is with Chiron on that eclipse day, right? So this is a time for for re, you know, recasting as well, or kind of a fresh start when it comes to how we deal with pain, when it comes to how we deal with pain, when it comes to healing and, and any issues around, around pain and healing, which is Chiron, right? They can't, there's going to be a lot of attention on those, but it's also time for start new, new projects or kind of a new approaches in that, in that area, right? So I'm going to give you one cultural example, which is, you know, super uh, in sync with this. And it's really kind of, it makes a lot of sense that this has been triggered right now. And that's Kate Middleton. So if you look at the chart of Kate Middleton, the, you know, the, 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 she's the, the, the princess. I don't even know what's the correct, what's the correct title. I don't know the correct title. She's Williams, obviously Williams. Uh, wife, right? So Prince William's wife. I don't know if that makes her the princess, but can't, you know, you know who I'm talking about, Catherine Middleton. She, uh, you know, she has now very prominently been uh, diagnosed with cancer. She was away for a couple of days, you know, for a couple of weeks. She was out of the public eye. She already has in her in her in her personal chart. She's got this super difficult. Uh, T squared that you can see here, right, with with Moon, Sun, and and Saturn, right, the very kind of difficult karmic uh, task that she will have to go through, right, the the karmic burden that she will have to, her entire being will have to go through, which is the Sun and the Moon are in here, and and also potentially is going to impact her entire family. This karmic burden, right, and then. Uh, and then this is triggered, what? By what? It's triggered exactly by Chiron here. So Chiron is here. Chiron is right now making a, a grand square here, you see, with, with that constellation here, right? With this constellation, right? This, right? Chiron is here. And the sun is going it to be exactly here, right? Exactly here. The sun is going to be on there, right? Around the time of the eclipse. So what does it mean? Well, you know, her going through dealing with cancer is going to be elevated into the public consciousness, into the collective consciousness. And how she deals with it, you know, she, this can, this is actually the role of the royals, you know, or royals in, in general, right? They are kind of a, a you know, they're kind of archetypal uh, stories they live story lives so that other people can see and then you know they can see the archetypal energies at play right that used to be the, the classical role and some of them still have it and and I think you can see her take on some because she also simultaneously she has the Jupiter 
on Chiron here. You see Jupiter on Chiron transit, which is a great uh, luck and fortune in trying healing methods, right? And at the same time, she has this, 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 actually the eclipse itself activates this and the sun Chiron. So it's going to be thrown into the public consciousness massively. And I think you may see her try new healing methods. Maybe, you know, completely new. I don't know what exists there, but there's like ozone therapy and there's all kinds of very alternative and very kind of, right? Like not non-mainstream therapies. That would be very much uh, corresponding with Chiron, Sun, in Aries, right? So if it's for yourself, if you're thinking about yourself, if there's any ailments, right? They, it might, in this month of April, they're going to become a topic, they're going to become a theme, but also searching for new ways to heal, searching for new ways to do your nutrition, or do any type of routines that you're doing to heal yourself, right, to improve your health. All of that is high on the agenda in the astrology in April. All right, so that's, uh, that's that. Let's see what we got next. Actually, I got another uh, little nugget of info here for you from Harry, the, the prince. You know, I don't know why I started to look at the, the royal families a little bit more here, but... He, he's got, during that same time, he's got a, you know, the eclipse actually falls on, the eclipse on the 8th, it actually falls in opposition to his Venus, right? And then he's got, simultaneously, he's got the Jupiter going on to, on to the moon in April as well. So I think you can see him have some type of homecoming, some type of big homecoming. And this typically, you know, archetypically with the signs that are here, it's going to go against his wife. So against his wife and closer to his family, right? So this could be a, a development there. But let's get back to the astrology for April. So where were we? We had the, the we got the sun with Chiron, right? The healing and Mercury comes in here as well, right? In, mid, in the middle of the month. So while you have you know, this is all happening simultaneously, right? So while you have this sneaky stuff going on here with the Mars, Saturn, simultaneously, you got a lot of healing and starting new healing methods, right? And then, obviously, the biggest transit of the month, if not of, you know, the year, or at least of the first part of the year, is coming into aspect, and that's Jupiter Uranus. We are already going towards this, obviously, but this is getting more and more and more exact by the day, so... We're getting more and more and more exuberance and enthusiasm in the markets, right? Why? Because Taurus, this is about um, material goods, right? And, and Jupiter Uranus, this is the great kind of, you know, enthusiastic explosion of good energy and optimism about innovation, Jupiter Uranus, right? So you have this happening right now. And as this is happening, this is just going to get more and more in this month, right? So your market, if you're looking at the markets, you know, they're just going to go up and up and up. This is not investment advice. None of this is investment advice, right? Not an investment advisor, but it's going to go up, right? So do with this what you want. Don't take it as investment advice. But as you can see here, right? So the, the, you see the New York Stock Exchange. This is the, new, this is the chart of the New York Stock Exchange. It's got its, its Mercury here, right? The Mercury of the New York Stock Exchange is on 23 of Taurus, and this conjunction is exactly on top of there, right? So, like, this is a huge time for, for new kind of ideas to get really big. If an IPO starts now during April, the IPO is going to do really, really good, right? That would be something to look at. And in general, there's just all of this enthusiasm goes directly onto the sun is here too of the New York Stock Exchange, right? So this is going to be an extremely uh, bullish time, right? Extremely bullish time for stocks in general, specifically which stocks, specifically obviously the ones that have to do with the uh, Taurus theme. So that's uh, real estate, that's utilities, that's uh, energy, right? Anything to do with the material domain, right? That's going to be the, the main focus. It's not just the New York Stock Exchange. It's not just trad finance. It also, obviously, the crypto space, the Web3 and crypto space. 
obviously is also right now in a super bullish phase and this is also in the chart you can see this so look at this we got here jupiter uranus the jupiter uranus conjunction this is the chart for the bitcoin genesis minting which is very important for bitcoin and you got this here this is on the parts of fortune the part of fortune the pars fortuna in latin right the part of fortune on of bitcoin and it's in a super nice trying to saturn and trying to to Jupiter down here, far trying to Jupiter here as well, right? So really, really nice. Uh, like, it looks like designed. It's so nice. It looks like, you know, as if you asked God for, can you show me a nice constellation for the markets? And, you know, that's it. There you go. April 2024, right? So the bull run is going to go up and up and up in this month. Forever? No, clearly not. Afterward, we got some difficult things coming up. I have seen things that other astrologers haven't. Again, if you want to get the updates on the markets as well, make sure to subscribe and be there for the next videos. All right. So a little bit of this you can actually see already in the conjunction chart itself. A lot of it is going to come later, but some of it you can see here because as the conjunction happens with the Jupiter Uranus coming together, you have simultaneously the sun pluto square here right so this is about power games and manipulation and right and crackdowns by the powerful elites on on you know the value of things so this is not just going to be a cycle of right of just like it just goes up and everybody's happy no there's going to be rug pulls there's going to be crackdowns there's going to be market manipulation, lots of market manipulation. Later on in this cycle, right, there's going to be so much more of it. But right now in April, as we're going into this exuberant phase, you will be able to see the first signs of this already happening towards the end of April. However, as I said, the exuberance, the enthusiasm is going to be so high that, you know, I don't think the... The manipulation is going to have much of an effect. So, you know, as the month goes into the last phase, you know, towards the end of April, we're just going to be riding that wave and, you know, people are going to be checking their portfolios and, and be super happy and have new ideas and all of that, which is typical for the Jupiter-Uranus uh, conjunction, right? This is super uh, typical and that you know as that kind of concludes the month we still have one more important uh configuration namely you know mars mars in you know mars which is kind of separating from from saturn in pisces it's towards the end of the month uh, april 25th 6 7 8 it goes into a conjunction with neptune right here right so Mars with Neptune, that's just more of that sneaky energy, you know, it's more of the, the, the hidden and secret type of warfare, it's also drugs, right, and also the bad effects of drugs, so narcotics, you know, kids don't do, don't do drugs in general, but also if you, even if you look at more, you know, let's say less, you know, strong substances that are typically, you know, more okay, I would be careful, especially towards the end of the month, Mars, uh, Neptune, it stands for sort of the bad effects of, of substances and, and drugs. Probably there are going to be some narcotics stories in the news with, you know, a lot of certainty actually towards the end of the month. On this, I think this is a good way to wrap this up. We have the astrology of April. We know what to get ready for. We know how to attune and align with the cosmic cycles that are coming. And if you want to see more on the next steps, this is the third time I'm telling you about the last time in this video. Make sure to subscribe and be part of this journey. Also, tell me in the comments what you want to see next. I love to adjust and kind of you know, develop my content together with the feedback of viewers. So let me know in the comments what you want to know more on, what you want to see in the next videos, and let's get in a convo there. Until then, I wish you a blessed month of April and all the best.